الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله ما بعد الحمد لله This is the first lesson where we will cover the book that was written by Sheikh Al-Allama Al-Faqib Muhammad ibn Salih Al-Uthaymin Rahimahullah Sifatu Salat nabi The Prophet's Prayer Described The Prophet's Prayer Described And the brothers and sisters should not confuse this with the monumental work of Sheikh Al-Albani Sheikh Al-Albani has a book with a similar title there are two different books, alhamdulillah, but the reason that they were written is the same. To teach people how to pray in accordance to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Sallu kama ra'itumuni usalli. Pray as you have seen me pray. And unfortunately, and the Shaykh will allude to this later on, this is one of the reasons why he compiled this book. You find many of the people are heedless when it comes to the issue of the prayer. They do not know how to pray correctly. And that is one of the reasons, alhamdulillah, we chose this book. Because brothers and sisters, if a person perfects the salah, then as Allah Azza wa Jalla said, "Inna salata tanha an al fahshai wal munkar." Verily, the prayer it prevents a person from illicit, immoral, sexual acts and evil. The prayer it prevents a person from illegal, immoral, sexual acts and evil. So, if somebody is falling into evil or falling into illegal sexual relations, then there's a problem with that salah. There's a problem with that prayer. So this is a very important topic. May Allah Azza wa Jalla bless us all to understand it and bless us all to implement that which we hear. So the Shaykh, he started with a muqaddimah, an introduction, muqaddimah to kitab an introduction to the book. He started with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in the name of Allah, the most merciful, the bestower of mercy. Alhamdulillah, الذي فرض على عباد الفرائض من غير فقر إليه ولا احتياج. All praise is due to Allah, who made it obligatory upon the servants to fulfill the obligations without having any need of this or want. Because Allah Azza wa Jal subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need anything from us. Allah Azza wa Jal does not need anything from us. Tabaraka wa ta'ala. And as Allah Azza wa Jal said subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu, O you who believe, Man yartadda minkum an deenihi, Fasawfa yati allahu bi qawmin, Yuhibbuhu wa yuhibbuna. O you who believe, Whoever turns their back upon the religion, Whoever apostates, Allah Azza wa Jal will come with the people, He loves them and they love Allah Azza wa Jal. Naam, Allah does not need us. Allah does not need our worship. Allah does not need our righteousness. Allah needs nothing from us. And that's why unfortunately you hear in these times, individuals they go through difficult times, instead of analyzing themselves, they say, you know, I don't want to be Muslim no more. Or you know, the religion is not for me. Who are you hurting with those words? Those sentiments, who are you hurting? You're hurting yourself. If we utter those words which are khatir and shadeed, the individual is only harming himself. Because if somebody turns their back on the religion, Allah Azza wa Jal will bring a people that is better than us. We are in need of Allah Azza wa Jal, and Allah Azza wa Jal is Al Ghani Al Hamid, the all rich, the one who is free of having any wants, deserving of all praise. Tabaraka wa ta'ala. And that's very important, brothers and sisters, for us to recognize and always understand. 
وأعطى القائمين بها أكمل الأجر وأفضل الثواب نعم All oh, praise is due to Allah who made it obligatory upon his servants to fulfill the obligations without any need for this or want and he gave those who perform these obligations the most complete reward and best recompense yes Allah Azza does not need it however if you obey the commands of Allah and you fulfill the obligations Allah Azza will reward you subhanahu wa ta'ala وَعَاقَبَ الْمُعْرِدِينَ عَنْهَا وَالْمُفَرِّطِينَ فِيهَا بِمَا يَسْتَحِقُونَ مِنَ الْعَذَابِ And Allah Azza wa Jal, He punishes those who turn away from the obligations. And those who are negligent with regards to them, He punishes them with that which is befitting, that which they deserve from punishment. Now, because Allah Azza wa Jal is the most just. وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له من غير شك ولا ارتياب. And I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah Azza wa Jalla alone without any partners. And I have no doubt or hesitancy concerning this. وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له من غير شك ولا ارتياب. وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله المبعوث رحمة للعباد. And I testify that Muhammad is the slave of Allah and his messenger who was sent as a mercy to the, the creation, to, his, to the servants. Question, the shaykh, he said here, I testify that none has the right to be worshipped alone without any partners, without any doubt. Naam. The conditions of la ilaha illallah, who can tell me what they are from the children? And again, ikhwan, this is important, alhamdulillah, that we start with these type of messiahs, these types of issues. The conditions of La ilaha illallah, tell me, give me one of them. Al-ilm, knowledge, which negates ignorance. The second, Fadl. Al-yaqeen, which negates, negates doubt. Naam, no, you're certain. You're certain, and you don't have any doubt. Look, the Shaykh, he said, I testify that none has the right to be worshipped in truth except Allah without any doubt and uncertainty. Because if somebody says it with doubt, it's not going to benefit them. It's not going to benefit them. What's the third condition? Yes, anta naam. Yes. Sincerity which negates? Ahsant. It negates showing off, which is a type of a shirk. What's the fourth? Hasan. Which negates what? Lying. The fifth is what? Ihsan. Muhabba, love. The sixth is what? Abdul Wali. Hasan. Acceptance. The seventh is what? He mentioned that. Which is what? Submission. Submission. Some of the ulama, they had an eighth. What is it? Abdul Malik. Naam, disbelief in a ta'ud, all of the false deities. <coughs> Brothers and sisters, alhamdulillah, no doubt, that is something that all of us, alhamdulillah, should know and understand. Wallahi, if a person was to know that and implement it in their life, they would have happiness in this dunya and happiness in the akhirah. So we don't have time to waste. Naam, the lesson is not about that, alhamdulillah, but it will come in the lessons of aqidah, and it will be repeated over and over again, inshallah. And if we don't know it, let us return back to the lessons that have passed. Shaykh ibn Uthaymin, he said, أَتَمَّ اللَّهُ بِهِ النِّعْمَ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Through the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah azawajal completed his blessing upon the believers. وَأَصْلَحَ بِهِ أَحْوَالَ الدُّنْيَ وَالدِّينَ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rectified the state of this world and also the religion through the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَصَلَوَاتُ اللَّهِ وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيْهِ وَعَلَىٰ آلِهِ وَأَصْحَابِهِ وَمَنْ تَبِعَهُمْ بِإِحْسَانٍ إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ الدِّينِ نَعَمْ أَمَّا بَعَدْ To proceed. This is an introduction of the shaykh and we'll take the introduction this lesson. Inshallah the next lesson بإذن الله we'll move on. He said أَمَّا بَعَدْ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ رَضِيَ لَنَا دِينَ And these are important. It's an important introduction. To proceed. Verily Allah Azza wa Jal, Tabaraka wa Ta'ala has chosen for us a religion. نعم. لَمْ يَرْضَ لَنَا دِينًا سِوَاهِ Allah has chosen for us a religion 
and he is not pleased with any religion besides it for us. Allah has chosen for us a religion, and this is the only religion that Allah Azza is pleased with for us. رَضِيَ لَنَا الْإِسْلَامِ وَمَنَّا بِهِ عَلَى هَذِي الْأُمَّةِ Allah has chosen Islam as our religion. And He has blessed this Ummah with the religion of Islam. It's a blessing for us. Alhamdulillah, الَّذِي هَدَانَ الْيَهَادَ All praise is due to Allah who guided us to this Islam. Ikhwan, they tried to buy the Prophet Wasallam is silent. They tried to buy it with money, with the promise of women with the promise of the glitter of the dunya, and he refused. They wanted to buy his silence, to be silent about warning against shirk, but he would not remain silent about warning against shirk. Why? Because the ni'm of al-Islam is more precious than this world and everything in it. And this world is worthless compared to it. That's why when you see people running around, and they're infatuated with the dunya, all they want to be is on Twitter and Instagram, exposing their sins, running around doing this and running around doing that, they lost. May Allah Azza wa rectify all of our affairs. Wallahi, the ni'm of Islam, the ni'm of the sunnah is more than this dunya and everything in it. Don't ever let yourself or your children look at the people of the dunya who are intoxicated by the dunya and long for what they have. It's worthless. We mentioned the hadith about the hadith of the Dajjal when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that a sajda, one prostration to Allah Azza wa at that time will be better than this world and everything in it. Just making sajda to Allah Azza wa will be better than this dunya and everything in it. The fact that we come to the masjid and pray, a person could be going through anything. You come to the masjid, you're with the believers, you pray your salah. Alhamdulillah, all of the difficulties of the world disappear. Many of us, alhamdulillah, many of the brothers, and we know, many of the sisters, they could have had the dunya. Many of them could have had it in various ways, but they turned their back on it. So why would they go back to it now? And shaitan will never give up, but he will constantly try to lure us back to it. Many of us left various things where we could have had the dunya. Various lifestyles. Why? Because we recognize the blessing of Islam is more than anything else. And that's what the sheikh is explaining. Brothers and sisters, this religion, the religion of Islam, us being Muslim, wallahi, is the greatest blessing that Allah bestowed upon us. So if that's the greatest blessing, then we need to learn about this religion. We need to learn about its fundamentals. And from the most important affairs of the region is what? The prayer, salah. We need to learn how to pray. And before that, no doubt the shahada team. So the shaykh, he said, as Allah Azza wa Jalla said, Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, Al-yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum, wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati, wa radiyitu lakum al-islam adina. This day, this day, what day was that? Anyone who can tell me what day was this ayah revealed without screaming out? Bilal. Arafa, Ahsant. Al-yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum. This day, I perfected your religion for you. Completed my favor upon you and chosen Islam as your religion. When the Yahud, they went to Umar ibn al-Khattab, they said if this ayah was revealed to us, we would have taken this day as a day of celebration. That's how powerful this verse is. Even the Jews, they understood it. They went to Umar ibn al-Khattab, they said if this ayah was revealed to us, we would have taken that day as a day of celebration. Because look, Allah said, this day I have perfected your religion for you. Islam is perfect. Allahu Akbar. And I've completed my favor upon you, and I've chosen for you Islam as your religion. I'll read briefly a benefit from Al-Imam Al-Sa'di. He said, وَلِهَذَا كَانَ الْكِتَابُ وَالسُنَّةِ كَافِيَيْنِ كُلَّ الْكِفَايَةِ For this reason, brothers and sisters, the Qur'an and the Sunnah are absolutely sufficient for the rulings of the religion. Now, because Allah said He perfected the religion. So the Qur'an and the Sunnah, if you want to know anything about your religion, Qur'an and Sunnah is sufficient for you. Brothers and sisters, if they invite you to these parties where they have these jazz musicians, and they say this is da'wah, wallahi kathabun, they're lying. If they invite you to these Sufi dhikr circles, and they say, Naam, this is the religion, this is how you're going to go to Jannah. They're kadabun, they're lying to you. If they say to you, no, no, you don't need to study this, you can read the books of Dale Carnegie. You know, he gives us a more unique perspective of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They're kadabun, they're lying. Why? Because Allah said, this day I perfected your religion for you. Perfected it when? It's in the Quran, it's in the Sunnah. That's why as Sa'di said, for this reason, the Quran and the Sunnah are absolutely sufficient 
for every one of us as it pertains to all matters of the religion. The rulings of the religion as it pertains to the fundamentals and the subsidiary matters. Then he said, فَكُلُّ مُتَكَلِّفْ يَزْرُمْ أَنَّهُ لَا بُدَّ لِلنَّاسِ فِي مَعْرِفَةِ أَقَائِدِهِمْ وَأَحْكَامِهِمْ إِلَى عُلُومٍ غَيْرِ عِلْمِ الْكِتَابِ وَالسُنَّةِ فُوَا جَاهِلْ وَمُبْطِلْ فِي دَعْوَاهِ Sa'adi, he said, رحمه الله. So every false claimant who makes the claim that the people they need other than the knowledge of the Qur'an and the Sunnah to know their beliefs, to know the rulings of their religion is a liar and a falsifier in his claim. And in reality, he has claimed that the religion is not complete except with what he stated and called to. قَدْ زَعَمَ أَنَّ الدِّينَ لَا, لا يَكْمُلُوا إِلَّا بِمَا قَالُوا وَدَعَا إِلَيْهِ وَهَذَا مِنْ أَعْظَمِ الظُّلْمِ Now, brothers and sisters, if we want to learn our religion, based upon this ayah in Surah Al-Ma'idah, verse number 3, Sa'di said, the Qur'an and the Sunnah is sufficient for us in the absolute sense. We don't need nothing other than that. So brothers and sisters, if that's the case, we can't afford to let anything divert us from that. Look, when at the time of Imam Shafi'i, rahimahullah, you know people in our time, illa man rahimahullah, except those whom Allah Azza wa has mercy upon, they get in their car, they listen to rap music, they listen to singers, they listen to this musician, they listen to this female dancer, they're listening to music. Imam Shafi'i saw people in Baghdad, they were singing anashids, songs that would soften the heart. Not the nonsense that people listen to today, talking about zina, fornication, talking about drugs, talking about being unfaithful to husbands, talking about being unfaithful to wives, talking about all types of filth. Not that nonsense. Uh, Shafi, rahimahullah, he was in Baghdad, he passed by a circle, they were singing songs about, you know, songs about softening the heart, things that they claimed that would bring them closer to Allah. He said, Hada ahdath al zanadiqa. The heretics, they've innovated this to divert people from the Qur'an, subhanallah. If he said that about Anashis, what would he say about the music present today? Anything that diverts from learning the Qur'an and the Sunnah is evil. Anything that diverts, diverts us from listening to the Qur'an, reading the Qur'an, trying to understand it, contemplating upon it, is something that is sharr, if it takes us away from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No matter what it is, whether it's he said, she said, anything that takes us away trying to learn this, is something that is not beneficial for us. Then the Shaykh ibn Uthaymin, he said, وَقَالَ فِيهِ أَيْضًا And Allah Azza wa Jalla likewise, he said about this, وَمَنْ يَبْتَغِ غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا فَلَنْ يُقْبَلَ مِنْهُ وَهُوَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ And whoever seeks a religion other than the religion of Islam, it will never be accepted from him, and in the hereafter he will be from the losers. نعم. In order for our actions to be accepted, the ulama, they mention three conditions. In order for a person's actions to be accepted, what are they? Who can give me the first? Fadl. Naam. You have to be Muslim. That's the first, Al Islam. Allah says here, وَمَن يَبْتَغِ غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا فَلَنْ يُقْبَلَ مِنْهُ Whoever desires a religion other than the religion of Islam, it will never be accepted from him. That's in the dunya, and in the akhirah, he will be from the losers. So the first condition for actions to be accepted is Al-Islam. The second is what? Fadl. Al-Ikhlas, sincerity. It has to be done seeking the face of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. The third na'am is what? The third. Following the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Everyone got those three conditions? You got them? What were they? Be Muslim. What was the second? Ikhlas, sincerity. What was the third? Following the sunnah. That's why you need to bring a pen and a paper. Alhamdulillah, it's good. Mashallah, you're sitting here. Excellent. Alhamdulillah, you put the effort in, which is excellent. Many people haven't. But bring a pen and a paper so that you can write, inshallah. And even if you find it difficult to write at the beginning, it will get easier. Okay? Naam. Sheikh ibn Uthaymin, he said, أُذَكِّرُكُمْ نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي دِينَ الْإِسْلَامِ He said, I remind you, O brothers, about the blessing of Allah upon you as it relates to the religion of Islam. Now, we should remember this all the time. The time that we wake up in the morning, the time that we go to sleep. The blessing of Islam upon us. That if we die upon us, al-Islam, if we die upon a tawheed, that we will enter Jannah. 
How many people are walking around on kufr, disbelief, lust? How many people are walking around calling upon other than Allah Azza wa Jal, calling upon Jesus alayhi salatu wa salam, calling upon animals? Well, iyadu billah. He said, I remind you about the blessing of Allah upon you, brothers and sisters. Let us remember. If we've become a bit lazy in terms of learning or in terms of striving, remember when, alhamdulillah, we first embraced the religion or we first, alhamdulillah, when we first embraced the Islam. The ni'mah of Allah Azza wa Jalla upon us, we should remember that. He said, فَكَمْ مِنْ أُنَاسٍ وَمَا أَكْثَرُهُمْ How many people ضلوا عن دين الإسلام have not been guided to the religion of Islam. How many? Walam yahtadu ilay, and they have not been guided towards it, and they have not accepted it. How many people? Just think in our own families. How many people are not upon Islam? And that is why, brothers and sisters, we need to be a kudwa hasana, a good example. We can't choose to be an example sometimes, and not an example other times. When we say, look, we say, Alhamdulillah, the religion that we are upon is haq, no doubt. The religion that we embrace, alhamdulillah, is the only path to Jannah. It's the only religion that's going to be accepted. But when we deal with our parents, but you haven't changed your lifestyle, the way you respect them, you still disrespect them. Or you're still running around, doing all types of haram things. What example is that? A person's going to look at you and say, what, what haq is this? What truth is this? You haven't tra- changed one bit. You're still the same person. Brothers and sisters, wallahi, the deen of Islam is a ni'mah. If we don't, implement it correctly if we don't fear Allah as it pertains to it then na'am Allah does not need does not need any one of us we need Allah the Shaykh he said how many people they have not been guided to the religion of Islam and they don't accept it and they are in a state of loss in their worldly affairs and in the hereafter and then he mentioned the ayah he mentioned a, a, a number of ayat in Surah Al-Kahf when Allah Azza wa Jalla he said, "Qul hal nunabbiukum bil akhsarina a'mala." Say, O Muhammad, shall we tell you the greatest losers in respect to their in respect to their deeds? Who are the greatest losers? Is it somebody that doesn't have a degree? Is it somebody that doesn't drive a nice car? Is it somebody that they're not on television that they're a loser? Are they not? They haven't been auditioned for you know the next series of Housewives. Are they the losers? Because people have different categories or scales to decide who's a loser and who's not a loser. So Allah Azza wa Jalla said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, "Qul hal nunabbiukum." He revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, "Qul hal nunabbiukum bil akhsarina a'mala." Say, O Muhammad, shall we tell you who are the greatest? Who are the losers as it pertains to their actions? Who are they? الَّذِينَ ضَلَّ سَعْيُهُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَهُمْ يَحْسَبُونَ أَنَّهُمْ يَحْسِنُونَ الصُّنْعَ They are those who their efforts have been wasted in this life whilst they thought that they were acquiring good by their deeds. Meaning, they thought they were doing good, but they will have no reward. Ibn Abbas, he said, this is referring to the Yehud and the Nasara, the people of disbelief. They believe they're doing good, but they don't have any reward. There's nothing there. Nothing. Likewise, some of the ulama, they said this is referring to the khawarij. From them, Ali ibn Abi Talib, he said this is referring to whom? Ahlu harurat. This is referring to the khawarij. And in part, no doubt, because the person of bid'ah, that particular action, it will not be accepted. So he thinks he's doing good, but it's not accepted. And the khawarij, billah, like ISIS and those in our time, they go around murdering people in the name of Islam, and it has nothing to do with Islam. Naam. And they are the most misguided of the people. They believe they're doing good. But they're upon dalala and fasad. Allah Azza wa Jalla says, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِآيَاتِ رَبِّهِمْ وَلِقَائِي فَحَبِطَتْ أَعْمَالُهُمْ فَلَا نُقِيمُ لَهُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَزْنَا They are those who deny the ayat of their Lord and the meeting with Him in the hereafter. So their actions... Their works are in vain, and on the day of resurrection, we shall assign no weight to them. Their deeds will be worthless. May Allah protect us from that. Now, brothers and sisters, remember the blessing of Islam upon us. And let us strive to learn our religion. وَقَالَ تَعَالَى And Allah Azza wa Jalla said again, who are the losers? قُلْ إِنَّ الْخَاسِرِينَ الَّذِينَ خَسِرُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ 
وأهليهم يوم القيامة ألا ذلك هو الخسران المبين سبحان الله العظيم Allah Azza wa Jalla said the meaning being say O oh Muhammad the losers are those who will lose themselves and their families on the day of resurrection what does that mean to lose yourselves and lose your families al baghawi he said wa qila khusrana nafs bi dukhul an-nar you lose as it pertains to your own self by entering the hellfire may Allah protect us from that the one who enters the hellfire he's lost ultimate loss wa khusrana al-ahl bi an yufarraq bayna wa bayna ahlihi وَذَٰلِكَ هُوَ الْخَسْرَانُ الْمُبِينَ And losing your family is that you will be split from your family. The money will be split from his family. And as Ibn Kathir he explains, تَفَارَقُوا فَلَا إِلْتِقَاءَ لَهُمْ أَبَدًا He said they split. The family, they split up in the hereafter. He said, they will never come together. سَوَاءً ذَهَبَ أَهْلُوهُمْ إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ وَقَدْ ذَهَبُوا هُمْ إِلَى النَّارِ أو أن الجميع أسكن أسكن النار ولكن لا اجتماع لهم ولا سرور. ابن كثير said meaning they've been split from their families. He said there is no union for them whatsoever. Whether their families went to paradise and they went to the hellfire, may Allah protect us from that. Or whether they all were placed in the hellfire and there is no union for them nor any happiness in it. Brothers and sisters, what do we need? We need people, wallahi. May Allah Azza wa Jal bless us with righteous families. May Allah Azza wa Jal bless us with righteous brothers, righteous sisters, companions that will aid us to go to Jannah. No doubt. Al-Mu'min lil-Mu'min kal bunyan. The believer to the believer is like a brother. And that is why no doubt we need one another. Al-Mu'min mira'atu akhihi. The believer is a mirror to his brother. What does a mirror do? You look in the mirror. If you see something wrong and aib, you correct it. That's like the brother. He tells you, Akhi, that's an aib. You know, correct it. But the family tells you, that's an aib, correct it. What is Islam? What is Islam? Al Islam is to submit to Allah and to yield to Him outwardly and inwardly as it pertains to belief and statement and action. Look, belief, statement, and action. Islam is not only belief. Islam is not only belief. لكن الإسلام عقيدة وقول وعمل. Islam is is belief, statement and action. How do you enter Islam, Muhammad? كيف ندخل في الإسلام؟ نعم. لكن النشهد أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله. نعم. So now a person says the shahada with their tongue. They believe it with their heart, and they have to implement that with their limbs. Islam is عقيدة. It is statement and it is actions. The Sheikh he said it is not only belief without actions. And it is not actions without belief, as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "Buni al-Islam wa ala khams." Islam is built upon five things: shahadati an la ilaha illallah, the testification that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah, and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Wa iqam al-salat to establish the prayer, wa ita al-zakat to give zakat, and hajj and fast in Ramadan. Wa ma'na dalik and the meaning of this hadith. أن هذه الأصول هي دعائم الإسلام التي لا يمكن أن يقوم إلا بها كما لا يقوم البناء إلا بأساسه. And the meaning of this, this hadith is that these are the foundations, these fundamentals are the foundations and the pillars of Islam. It is not possible for Islam to be established except with them. Like a building, it is impossible for a building to be established except with its foundation. Naam, it is impossible for a building to stand except with its foundation. Is that clear to everybody? Naam. So the Sheikh he said, "Innana ayyuh al-ikhwa nudhakiru anfusana wa iyaqum bi ni'mati Allahi alayna." Again, we advise ourselves, brothers and sisters. We advise ourselves and we advise you with the blessing of Allah upon us, as it pertains, alhamdulillah, to this religion of Islam. We ask Allah. We ask Allah the Most High. And you thabbitna alayhi hatta nalqah. That we ask Allah that He makes us firm until we meet Him. Brothers, Allah says in the Quran, "Ya ayyuha al-ladina amanu taqu Allah. Hakka tuqati wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun." Oh, you who believe fear Allah, as He deserves to be feared, and do not die except as Muslims. How many people do you know that have apostated? Or how many people now do you know that they say, "I don't pray at all. I am not usalli. I don't pray one prayer." How many people? 
That's why we should always ask Allah for guidance. And in every rakah, in Surah Al-Fatiha, we ask Allah for guidance. We never feel safe. We say, اِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطِ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Oh Allah, guide us to the straight path. الْهِدَايَةِ الْمُجْمَلَةِ وَالْمُفَصَّلَةِ so look, the Shaykh is saying, we ask Allah, because this religion of Islam is a blessing. My question to you, can blessings be taken away? Huh? Yes. We ask Allah to make us firm until we meet Him. وَلَكِنْ إِعْلَمُوا أَيُّهَا الْإِخْوَةِ Know, brothers and sisters, أَنَّ نِعْمَةَ الدِّينَ That the blessing of the religion of Islam, أَنَّ نِعْمَةَ الدِّينَ الْإِسْلَامِ كَغَيْرِهَا مِنَ النِّعَمِ إِنْ شُكِرَتْ زَادَتْ وَثَبَتَتْ وَاسْتَقَرَّتْ وَإِنْ كُفِرَتْ نَقُصَتْ أَوْ زَالَتْ The Shaykh said, No brothers and sisters, that the blessing of the religion of Islam, you being a Muslim, is like other than it from the blessings of Allah. If a person is thankful, if a person shows thanks, then the blessing will be increased, it will be established, it will be firm. Now the brother he recited, what ayah did he recite in the salah? That is a proof of that. Who can tell me? He recited it in Maghrib. Na'am, ahsan. The brother, he mentioned the ayah, Akhuna Mustafa in Salat al-Maghrib. As a dalil is what the Shaykh, he said here, no brothers and sisters, that the blessing of the religion of Islam is, like, is similar to any other blessing. Meaning what? If a person shows thanks, it will increase. It will grow. It will be firm. It will be established. If a person is ungrateful, if a person is ungrateful, then it will deplete, it will decrease, or it will disappear. May Allah protect us from that. And the proof now is the ayah that the brother he recited, وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ And your Lord has announced, your Lord has announced that if you are thankful, He will increase you. If you show thanks, Allah will give you more. If you show thanks with your tongue, with your heart, with your limbs, Allah will give you more. Showing thanks, now, if Allah blesses you, you use that blessing to please Him. Allah blessed you with a car, use that car to go to the masjid. Don't use that car to go to a nightclub, that's a haram. That's not being thankful. Being thankful, the ulama, they mentioned that you're thankful with your tongue. Thankful with your heart, and that you use the blessings of Allah to please Allah Azza wa Jal. And Allah will increase us. It's a promise. And Allah emphasizes that in various ways. In the ayah. وَلَا إِن كَفَرْتُمْ And if you are ungrateful, إِنَّ عَذَابِ لَشَدِيدٍ Then verily my torment, my punishment is severe. My torment is severe. If you are ungrateful, my torment is severe. The Shaykh, he said, فَإِذَا قُمْنَا بِمَا يَجِبْ عَلَيْنَا مِنْ دِينَ الْإِسْلَامِ مِنْ حِمَايَةِ وَالدَّعْوَ إِلَيْهِ وَالثَّبَاتَ عَلَيْهِ فَإِنَّنَا سَوْفَ نَزْدَادُ مِنْهُ ثَبَاتًا وَعَمَلًا وَدَعْوَةً كَمَا قَالَ رَبُّنَا عَزَّ وَجِلْ If we implement the religion of Islam, as Allah Azza wa Jalla has commanded us, نعم, if we safeguard it and preserve it and we call to it and we remain firm upon it, then we will increase in our firmness, we will increase in our actions, and we will increase in our da'wah. نعم. If we show thanks to Allah Azza wa Jal, and we implement the religion as we have been commanded, as it pertains to safeguarding it, calling to it, being firm upon it, Allah will give us more blessings. As Allah Azza wa Jal, He said, وَالَّذِينَ اهْتَدَوْ زَادَهُمْ هُدَى وَآتَاهُمْ تَقْوَاهُمْ Those who accept guidance, Allah will increase them in their guidance, and He will give them their piety. Those who accept guidance, Allah will increase them in their guidance, and He will give them their piety. And Allah Azza wa Jalla says, Subhanahu wa Taala in Surah Maryam, وَيَزِيدُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ اهْتَدَوْا هُدَى وَالْبَاقِيَاتُ الصَّالِحَاتُ خَيْرٌ عِنْدَ رَبِّكَ ثَوَابًا وَخَيْرٌ مَرَدَّا And Allah Azza wa Jalla said in Surah Maryam, which is a similar meaning, and Allah Azza wa Jalla will increase those who accept guidance in their guidance. He will give them more. If you act and do righteous deeds, Allah will increase you. And the ulama, they say, brothers and sisters, if somebody wants more knowledge, what is the way to get more knowledge? To act upon your knowledge. Al-amal bil-ilm, acting upon knowledge, is a way to get more knowledge. So if you learn a hadith, you act upon it, Allah Azza wa Jalla will open for you more knowledge. If you learn something of your religion and you implement it, Allah will open for you more knowledge. 
The Shaykh, he said, and the verse in the translation, Wallah al mustad it was missed. And that is why in the translation, Alhamdulillah, brother Taqweem, he said, Jazallah khairan, that if anyone notices anything, any mistakes or any errors, then Alhamdulillah, point them out so that they can be corrected. And no doubt, Ikhwan, no, as Ibn Rajab, he said, Ya Abu Allah, Allah Azza wa Jal refuses to give perfection to any book except his book. Allah Azza wa Jal, subhanahu wa ta'ala, refused to give perfection to any book except for his book, the Quran. So any translation, you may see in it some mistakes. And Alhamdulillah, look at the brother, Jazahullah khairan, may Allah reward him. He said, if anyone notices a mistake in it, point it out for me. That's the mawqif of the Muslim. I make a mistake, Alhamdulillah, that's why we have brothers here. Point out my mistake. Don't follow me in it. Alhamdulillah, we're here studying together. We're going over this book. We're learning it together. Alhamdulillah, if I make an error, correct me. So we booni. Hadul wajib. That is what's obligatory. We don't see somebody make a mistake and remain silent upon it. And we don't become upset if somebody points an error out. Why? Because the goal is what? Preservation of the religion. Wabihada yatabayyan, the Shaykh he said. And I want to finish, inshallah, the muqaddimah before we uh, stop the dars. Wabihada yatabayyan lana annahu kulla mazdadal. كلما ازداد الإنسان طاعة لله فتح الله عليه من أبواب العلم والإيمان ما لم يفتح على غيره. The Sheikh he said, and with this it becomes clear that the more a person obeys Allah, Allah opens up to him doors of knowledge and iman. The more you obey Allah, Allah will open up for you doors. Allah will open up for you doors, knowledge, faith that He did not open for other than this individual. Naam, that's a promise. Look at the hadith. Man yurid Allah bi khayran yufaqihu fi deen. Whoever Allah wants good for, He gives him knowledge of the religion. Brothers and sisters, if you strive, you leave your house, you attend a lesson, you're sincere, that you're going to that lesson to increase in, in knowledge so that you can implement it, alhamdulillah, out of obedience for Allah Do you think Allah is going to not reward you for that? Do you think Allah is not going to increase you for that? Surely He's going to increase you. Allah says it, وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا Whoever fears Allah, Allah will provide for them a way out. وَيَرْزُقُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبُ And Allah will provide for you from ways that you couldn't even imagine. You're going to be thinking, where did that come from? Where did that blessing come from? Where did that ni'mah come from? You couldn't even imagine it. How did it come from out the blue? What a blessing. Why? From fearing Allah, striving for the sake of Allah. But if you don't strive for Allah, if you don't sacrifice for Allah, if you don't obey for Allah, what do we expect? He said, فَأَحُثُّ طَلَبَةِ الْعِمْ خَاصًا He said, I advise the students of knowledge especially, and this is applicable to all the Muslims, طَلَبَةِ الْعِمْ وَغَيْرُهُمْ The students of knowledge and other than them. التَّمَسُّكْ بِشَعَارِ الْإِسْلَامَ الظَّاهِرِ وَالْبَاطِنَ الْمُتَعَلِقَ بِحَقِّ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ وَبِحُقُوقِ عِبَادِهِ حَتَّى يَزِيدُهُمُ اللَّهُ عِلْمًا وَهُدًا وَنُورًا He said, I advise the students of knowledge specifically. But obviously if that's specific, it's also applicable to every Muslim and Muslim, male and female. That they cling and adhere to the signs of Islam, the apparent actions of Islam, that which is done outwardly and that which is inwardly. That they cling to them. That which pertains to the right of Allah, and that which is pertains to the rights of his servants. Naam. Fulfill the rights of Allah Azza wa Jal. Fulfill the rights of the servants. Why? So that Allah can increase you in your knowledge and your guidance and your light. فَتَعَلَّمُوا حُدُودَ مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ عَلَى رَسُولِهِ لِتَعْبُدُوا رَبَّكُمْ عَلَى بَصِيرَةٍ وَبُرْحَانٍ He said, learn the boundaries of that which Allah revealed to his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so that you can worship your Lord upon knowledge and proof. Naam. So that you're not like those who have gone astray. الضالون الضالون They worshipped Allah upon jahl, ignorance. Saw people doing something, they followed them. They said, okay, you do it like this, I'm going to do it like that. I'm just following you. They don't have a clue and it could be wrong. It could be innovation, it could be misguidance. Naam. Learn the boundaries of what Allah revealed to the messenger. Why? So you can worship Allah upon understanding and upon proof. فَإِنَّهُ لَا يَسْتَوِ الَّذِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Because those who know, they're not equal to those who know not. Somebody who has knowledge is not equal to the, the one who doesn't have knowledge. Allah said it in the Quran. قُلْ هَلْ يَسْتَوِ الَّذِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Are those who know equal to those who know not? They're not. That's a negation. Those who know, they're not equal to those who know not. The alim, the scholar, he's not equal to the worshipper, the abid. They're not equal. 
Look what the Shaykh he said next. He said, لا يستوي من يعبد الله وهو يعلم كيف يعبده ويعلم أنه يعبد على شريعة الله وسنة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. لا يستوي هذا ومن يعبد الله وهو يجهل ذلك. They are not equal. The one who worships Allah and he knows how to worship him. They are not equal. The one who worships Allah and he knows how to worship him. And he knows that he worships him in accordance to the sharia, the legislation of Allah, and the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa This person is not equal to the one who worships Allah and he's ignorant of that. They're not equal. They're not equal. And that is why the ignoramus, the jahil, Ibn al jawzi mentions in Talbis Iblis, one of the biggest ways of the shaytan to misguide a person, he blocks from them from the path of knowledge. Keep them ignorant. Keep them ignorant, that's a sitting duck, easy prey. He's jahil. Block him from ilm. He said, Mata alimtum hududa ma anzal Allah. When you have knowledge of the boundaries of what Allah has revealed, Fattaqullah ta'ala. Fear Allah. Fear tizamiha by clinging to them. Mastata'atum as much as you are able. Wa tabbiquha kama alimtum. And implement them as you know it. Now, brothers and sisters, if we learn something, let's implement it. If we learn it, if it's an ayah, implement it. Hadith, implement it. If it, no matter what it's about, no matter what it relates to, try and implement it. Even you go away, implement it as soon as you can. So alhamdulillah, you've gone, you've implemented that hadith, that ayah. You've tried to do it. So that alhamdulillah changes done bit by bit. Change sometimes is gradual. To make a change is gradual. A person is stingy and miserly, give small but consistently. A person is lazy in seeking knowledge, choose one class that you're consistent with. A person mother is lazy with regards to certain acts of ibadat, which are not obligatory maybe from the nawafil, choose some of them and be consistent with it. Changes, alhamdulillah, that way you will notice a great change over a period of time. The Shaykh, he said, listen to this, وَلَا تَأْخُذُكُمْ فِي ذَلِكَ لَوْمَةُ لَائِمْ أَوْ انتقال منتقد. And do not fear the blame of the blamer or the criticism of the criticizer. Naam, that is from the sifat of the believers. They do not fear the blame of the blamers. Brothers, wallahi aqulak. I say to you, as long as you know, if you are certain that you're implementing Quran, and you are certain that you're implementing Sunnah, with the understanding of the self of this Ummah, don't be scared and don't worry about what anyone says about you. Don't worry about it. Don't let it bother you. Don't let it grieve you. What anyone says about you. Because what matters is what? The pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal. What matters, what is going to benefit you, if Allah is pleased with you. If Allah Azza wa Jal is pleased with you. If people are upset with you because you strive to cling to Quran and Sunnah with understanding of the Salaf, just sit back and watch and wait. And be patient. Look brothers and sisters, look at the MBA. And I don't want to go off topic. I really want to finish the muqaddimah. Look at the prophets, how they were t- trialed and tested. They were trialed and tested in different ways. Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam, he was thrown in prison because they, he was, they tried to seduce him and he refused because he, ref- he feared Allah. He was patient. He was in prison calling to tawheed. He never became like these deviants of today going around murdering people. He was patient. He gave dawah to tawheed, inviting them to tawheed. Likewise, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, they threw him into the fire because he called to Tawheed. He called them to worship Allah Azza wa and he prohibited them from shirk. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, when he was at the Kaaba, when he was praying, they came to him, they strangled him. Abu Bakr had to pull the individual off and said, do you want to kill the man because he says my Lord is Allah because he worships Allah Azza wa alone without any partners. Look at the Anbiya. Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, Loot. Look at their wives. Their wives turned against them. Brothers, the people that Allah loves, He trials them. He tests them. In this dunya, if Allah loves you, He's going to test you. Imam Malik, He said, don't be jealous of anyone that has not been tested. Why? Because if Allah loves the people, He tests them. He's going to test you in different ways. He may test you with your wealth. He may test you with your health. He may test you with your children. He may test you with your wives. He may test you with your friends. He may test you in different ways. Are we going to give up and not be patient? 
Are we going to give up and not be patient? May Allah Azza wa Jalla make us from the patient. The Shaykh he said, "Do not fear the blame of the blamers or the criticism of the criticizers. Let them go on the internet. Let them open up websites talking about brothers. Let them have their blogs. Let them do whatever they want. So what? If you know what you're doing is right, don't worry what they said." The Shaykh said he mentioned the ayah, "Atakshawnu fa Allah wa ahaq an takshawu in kuntum mu'minin." Do you fear them? And Allah Azza wa Jalla is more deserving for you to fear Him. If you truly are believers, he said, "Wala yakhfa alayna jami'an anna din al-Islam buni ala khams." It is not hidden from any of us that the religion of Islam is built upon five pillars. The first is what? What's the first pillar of Islam? What's the other? So the Sheikh he said, "Wa hadi al-arkan al-khams tatafawatu fi maratibha wa fadliha wa ahkamha wa tashtariku kulla fi anha arkan al-Islam." He said these pillars, these five pillars differ in their levels, virtues and rulings. Now these five pillars they differ in their levels, their virtues and rulings. Ikhwan, I'll give an example. If the shahada is not there, is a person a Muslim? Huh? No, he's not a Muslim. If the person doesn't take the take, state the shahada, they're not a Muslim. That's with ijma of the ulama, with a consensus. If somebody does not say "Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah," "Ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah," they're not a Muslim. They can make Hajj, they can pray, they can give zakah. If they lack the shahada, they're not Muslim. With regards to fasting, sum. If somebody, alhamdulillah, they have the shahada, they pray, but they are negligent when it comes to fasting. They may fast some days, they don't fast other days. Is that person? Does that remove them from Islam? No, if they affirm the obligation, they're a sinner, they're a fasik milli, but it doesn't expel them from the fold of Islam. So no doubt the Sheikh is saying, these five pillars, they differ in their levels, their virtues and rulings. However, they all share in the fact that they are the pillars of Islam. They all share in the fact that they are the pillars of Islam. He said, أَمَّا مَا يَتَعَلَّقْ بِالسَّلَاءِ فَهَذِي رِسَالَةٌ فِي الصَّلَاةِ لَعَلَّ اللَّهَ سُبْحَانَهُ أَنْ يَنْفَعَ بِهَا عِلْمًا وَعَمَلًا وَأَنْ يَجْعَلَنِي وَإِيَّاكُمْ هُدَاتًا مُهْتَدِينَ وَإِنَّمَا اخْتَرْتُ هَذَا الْمَوْضُوعِ لِأَمْرَيْنِ The Shaykh said, as for that which is related to the prayer, then this book is about the prayer. Naam. Alhamdulillah, we, ha- we, we went through Kitab al-Tawheed, we went through the three fundamental principles, we went through Kitab al-Shubahat, we're going through now Sharh al-Sunnah with matters of Aqeedah. Alhamdulillah, so we, we're doing that as well. But this book now we're going through is about the prayer. He said... Perhaps Allah Azza wa Jal will benefit through this work, benefit people in terms of their knowledge and action. And we ask Allah Azza wa Jal, perhaps Allah Azza wa Jal will make me and you from those who are guided. He said, and I chose this subject for two matters. Why did he choose to write about the salah, sifat to salat? I chose this subject, this topic for two matters. Now, before that he said, may Allah Azza wa Jal, Make me and you guides to the truth and guided upon it. So he chose it for two reasons. Al-awwal, ahamiyyatuhu shari'iyya. Haythu inna salata hiya a'adamu arkan al-islam ba'd al-shahadatayn. He said the first reason due to the legislative importance of the prayer. Because the prayer is the greatest of the pillars of al-islam after the shahadatayn. So that's the first reason. Why he chose to write this book. Al-thani, the second reason... أن كثيرا من المسلمين اليوم تهاونوا بكثير من أمور الصلاة. Many of the Muslims today have become careless and negligent in many of the affairs of the prayer. I'll give an example. خشوع. One of the most important parts of the prayer, having focus and submissiveness in the prayer. Some people they can't stop moving in the prayer. They move in their kufi. They pick in their thob. You know they're doing all types of movements in the salah. That are not from the actions of the prayer. You have other people, they're looking all over the place. They look up, they look down, they look, they're looking who comes in the door, they're looking all over the place. Khushu'ah. Other people with regards to the actions of the prayer. Naam. Like I said, and I gave the example. When uh, a person experiences waswas of the shaitan, some of the brothers, alhamdulillah, they've heard of the sunnah, but they don't know how to implement it properly. And inshallah, the ikhwan, when we go on to the actual 
characteristics of the prayer will go downstairs. Why? Because some of the brothers, they can't come upstairs. And like our brother Abdul Majid, he mentioned, you know, some of them, Alhamdulillah, they're unable, but they would like to see it. And obviously some things have to be demonstrated. But when the, some brothers, when they spit to their left, instead of just going lightly, some of them actually spit, which is a khata. You don't actually spit saliva, like poo, and the person next to you is spitting on him. But some people do that. Also, some people, when they do that, they turn their whole body. And I've mentioned to the brothers numerous times, they look back behind them like this. And that's a mistake because you're taking your body away from facing the Qibla. Naam. Many, various mistakes. Various types of mistakes. And Alhamdulillah, sometimes, Ikhwan, yeah, some people don't know. But if we don't know, what should we do? We should learn. We should learn. If we don't know, Alhamdulillah, no matter how old we are, we, we can still strive to learn. Or how young we are. And this is, Alhamdulillah, a lesson explains the meaning of what you say in the prayer. The stuff that you say. The meaning of Allahu Akbar. What does that really mean? Allah is the greatest. What does it mean? He explains the meaning of Dua al-Istiftah, the opening supplication, the meaning of Subhana Rabbi al-Azim. He explains the meanings of all of these things. The tashahud. So that not only have you memorized it, you truly understand what it means and that will have a powerful effect. If you're just standing there and you say Al-Fatiha, you don't know what it means. You say the Adhkar, you haven't got a clue what it means. Everything you say, you don't know what it means. Is it going to have the same effect as somebody who knows what it means and his heart is focusing and contemplating? So then the Shaykh, he said, and we'll close with this, inshallah. Jazakumullah khairan. May Allah bless every one of you for your patience. He said, وَتَضَمَّنَ هَذِ الرِّسَالَ عَرْضَ الْأُمُورَ التَّالِيَةِ This book, it comprises of the following things. So you know what to expect in this book. What's the, what does this book contain? What is in it? Al-awwal, the first. فِي مَعَنَ الصَّلَاةِ The meaning of the prayer, لُغَةً وَشَرْعًا In the Arabic language and in the Islamic religion. The meaning of the prayer, what does prayer mean in the Sharia? And what does prayer mean in the Arabic language? That's the first issue. Athani, the second matter. Mata wa aina furidati salah. When and where did the prayer become wajib? Thalith. Athalith fi bayani ahamiyati ha sharan. A clarification of the importance of the prayer. Yes, we can't afford to be negligent with it. The Prophet wasallam said, فَمَنْ تَرَكَهَا فَقَدْ كَفَرْ Whoever abandons it is disbelieved. The ulama, they differ over the Islam of somebody who abandons the prayer, even if he affirms the obligation. So the shaykh is going to talk about its importance. Likewise, a clarification of Rabi'u, fi bayani fadliya wa fawa'idiya, clarification of its virtue and it, the benefits of the prayer. Al khamis, the fifth matter, fi tahdiri min idha'atiya, a warning against being negligent concerning it. Al sadis, the sixth matter, fi bayani hukmi tarikiha, an explanation of the ruling about, about the one who abandons the prayer. Al sabi', the seventh matter. في بيان بعض شروطها a clarification of some of its conditions the conditions of the prayer الثامن في بيان صفاتها على ضوء الكتاب والسنة the clarification of the description of the prayer according to the Quran and the Sunnah نعم إخوان knowing the conditions of the prayer is important knowing the arkan the pillars of the prayer is important knowing the obligations of the prayer is important why because if you make a mistake in the prayer how are you going to correct it if you don't know what a pillar is then you're not going to know how to really correct your mistake if you can't differentiate between a pillar and an obligation. And the ulama, they say, مَا لَا يَتِمُ الْوَاجِبِ إِلَّا بِهِ فَوَا وَاجِبِ That which you need to fulfill an obligation is an obligation. In order for you to make sujood the sahaw, if you make a mistake in the prayer, you have to know what? You have to have knowledge of the conditions and the obligations of the prayer. And likewise, madha, the pillars of the prayer. Otherwise, you won't know how to make the correction. So, مَا لَا يَتِمُ الْوَاجِبِ إِلَّا بِهِ فَوَا وَاجِبِ That which is needed to fulfill an obligation is an obligation. Do we have time to waste ourselves gossiping? Qil and qal? Worrying about this person, worrying about that person. We don't have time. Likewise, the Shaykh he said, At-Tasi' fi bayan al fiya Clarification of the obligations as it pertains to the prayer. Al-Ashir, the tenth matter. Fi bayani qa'idatayn sharifatayn A clarification of two noble principles as it relates to the salah. Al-Hadi Ashir, the eleventh matter. Fi bayani ahamiyat al khushu' A clarification of the importance of khushu' submissiveness and focus in the prayer. Athani Ashar, the twelfth matter. Fi bayani hukmi salatil jama'ah. Wa bayani ba'di ahkamiha. 
a clarification of the ruling of the congregation of prayer, a clarification of some of its rulings. So this book is very, is muhim jiddan. It's very important. The Shaykh, he discusses those 12 things in this book in detail. In a lot of detail. And inshallah ta'ala, if we can be patient, all of us, alhamdulillah, brothers and sisters, I remember a few years ago, when we opened Kitab al-Tawheed, alhamdulillah, it was a ni'mah. It was a blessing. It brought me delight. And inshallah, it brought the brothers and likewise the sisters delight as well. And we read and we finished it all to the end. May Allah Azza wa Jalla bless us to be consistent and finish it. Not that we start something and we don't finish it. This is about salah. This is about prayer. This is about the matter that one of the first things that you're going to be asked about on the day of judgment is your prayer, your salah. Naam. So alhamdulillah, this book is suitable for new shahadas, for beginners and advanced students. It's suitable for everyone. If you're in a new shahada class, you should be learning this. Siva to Salat in Nabi. It's not complicated where people can't sit down and learn. May Allah Azza wa grant us tawfiq. Any questions pertaining to anything so far, Ikhwan? The brother, he said, uh, with regards, I mentioned the, the ayah, inna salata tanha ain al fahshai wal munkar, that the prayer, it prevents a person from al fahsha illegal, immoral, sexual acts, and evil. So how do we reconcile between somebody that may find himself now doing, falling into evil deeds? That individual, no doubt, he should look at his salah. Yandur ila salatihi. He should look at his prayer. Hal huwa yuqeem as salah kama umira? Is he establishing the prayers he has been commanded? Now in terms of the conditions, the obligations and the pillars. Likewise, is he praying the way that the Prophet Wasallam taught us to pray? Also, likewise, he should look. Has he got al-khushur? Is he focusing and concentrating upon his, in his prayer from the beginning to the end? He should look at these things. And if he finds any deficiency in them, then alhamdulillah, he should rectify it. Let me just read for you the tafsir of uh, that ayah of Imam al-Sa'di rahimahullah. Verily, the prayer prevents a person from al fahsha wal munkar. He said, وَوَجْ كَوْنِ الصَّلَاةِ تَنْهَا عَنِ al fahsha wal munkar أَنَّ الْعَبْدَ الْمُقِيمْ لَهَا الْمُتَمِّمْ لِأَرْكَانِهَا وَشُرُوطِهَا وَخُشُوعِهَا يَسْتَنِيرُ قَلْبُهُ The prayer prevents a person from illegal sexual relations and evil because the one who establishes it. And notice Allah mentions iqamat salat. Establishing the prayer, not just doing the actions. There's a difference between iqamah to salah, establishing the prayer, and just doing the actions of the prayer. Because the servant that establishes the prayer, perfects its pillars and conditions, and likewise khushu, submissiveness and focus, his heart will be a, a light. His heart will be lit with light. And his chest, his heart it will be cleansed, it will be pure. وَيَزْدَادُ إِيمَانُهُ And his iman will increase, no doubt. Iman increases with righteous deeds. You pray your prayer the way Allah commanded you, it's going to increase your iman. It's going to increase your prayer. It's going to increase your taqwa, your piety. وَرَغْبَتُهُ فِي الْخَيْرِ And your desire to do good. وَتَقِلُّ The Shaykh, he said, a Sa'di, and you will find that the desire of this individual will be diminished to do evil, or it will be absent in totality. فَبِالدُّرُورَ It is a must. مُدَاوَمَتُهَا وَالْمُحَافَظَ عَلَيْهَا عَلَى هَذَا الْوَجْهِ The one who constantly prays like this, and safeguards his prayer in this fashion, the prayer, it will prevent him from illegal sexual relations and evil. Naam, obviously. He said, فَهَادَ مِنْ أَعْظَمْ مَقَاسِدِهَا وَثَمَرَاتِهَا that's from the greatest of the intentions and the fruits and the objectives of the prayer. How many times people was ta'inu bi sabri was salah seek aid in patience and prayer. You're thinking about evil, go and pray. You're going to do some haram, or you're thinking about going to do some haram. You're going to, you know, go and sneak around because it's dark outside, or because nobody sees you, but Allah sees you. Go and pray. Get up and pray salah. How many people tried that? The Shaykh, he said, فَهَذَا 
من أعظم مقاصدها وثم في الصلاة مقصود أعظم من هذا وأكبر وهو ما اشتملت عليه من ذكر الله and know that as it pertains to the prayer there is a goal and an objective even greater than that and this is that which it comprises of from the remembrance of Allah the remembrance of Allah بالقلب واللسان والبدن you remember Allah with your tongue with your heart and with your body that is the the way that the, this type of prayer it will prevent a person so now if a person finds a deficiency go back look at his prayer learn how to pray ask somebody can you teach me how to pray if you have somebody to teach you how to pray hold on to them with your molar teeth don't let them go akhi teach me how to pray please teach me how to pray leave the qurana asu evil companions leave them they're not going to take you anywhere beneficial